My name is Matt Wadsworth. I'm a bankruptcy attorney with Arnold and Wadsworth. And in the next few minutes, I'm going to be talking to you about losing pro property in a bankruptcy and saving your house. Another couple questions I get asked often are whether or not bankruptcy can save my house and what property I can keep. Those are great, great questions, especially considering that a Chapter 7 is generally a liquidation of your assets and then paying it to your creditors. And so a Chapter 7 and a 13 generally, um, they are going to collect your non-exempt property. And this is where the Utah statutes come into play because Utah has exempted certain properties from bankruptcy, from the bankruptcy estate. In other words, the bankruptcy trustee or the bankruptcy court can't take them from you. And so this often comes into play with regard to your house or a sec even a secondary property that you may have or your car, um, your food in your house, food storage, clothes. Um, a lot of the necessities that people need are already covered and they will never be taken by the bankruptcy estate. This would include even musical instruments sometimes or firearms. And so a lot of the things that you really want to keep, they aren't going anywhere. And items that are of nominal value um, that you would sell or see at a garage sale, the bankruptcy d court doesn't want those things. They just don't want them. Okay, it, takes, it costs more money to take them from you and then sell them than they would ever recoup. And so there's a practicality for you to consider. This is especially important when we talk about a person's house, which is often their, their gravest concern. It's where they live. It's where their children live. In a Chapter 7 or even a 13, they can both save your house, but they do it in different ways. Um, and the more... And I'll go into a, how a Chapter 13 basically does save your house. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. In a Chapter 7 situation, however, there is a period of time where you can enter into negotiations with your creditor, whether it be Wells Fargo or Chase or Cypress Credit Union. It doesn't really matter. And during that stage, you can talk about repayment terms. Um, in order to maintain the, the loan on your house, uh, the creditor has to have you sign a reaffirmation agreement. And so during that stage, you basically reopen the negotiations for your loan. Sometimes they can be modified. Sometimes the creditor is rigid, though, and does not do so, and they don't have an obligation to change the, the terms. In a Chapter 13, however, whatever amounts you are behind, you automatically are brought current. And this is one of the other perks of a Chapter 13. And so if you're behind on a, on a house payment, like we were just uh, talking about, or even a car, if you're a few months behind on a car, you will automatically be caught up on your payments. The amount or the rears that you owe doesn't go away, though. And so you have to pay it back in the 13, and that's where you pay it back over a course of three years or five years or somewhere in between or whatever. So those are some things for you to consider. But the... The takeaway is, no, you're not going to lose your stuff, and you're not going to lose your house unless you really need to lose your house, okay? And so and that's something that we would discuss when you came in to chat with me. If you are in a situation where you are being garnished, or you are about to be garnished, or your car is about to be repoed, or you are in the middle of a foreclosure or about to go into a foreclosure, please give me a call anytime. Uh, we're happy to answer any questions that you may have and we do give free consultations.